sailing. It's something everyone has to do in this game. Some do it more than others. I definitely don't do it very much myself. And so recently I got curious how to define what the best ship is. Now a lot of people would consider best about the amount of damage that can be output, which can pretty easily be put into copperheads, save for the rare few ships, warships, and Queen Anne's Revenge that have so much health that it's actually more worthwhile to use Firebrand to chew through it using its percentage-based damage rather than raw damage. And so for mat runs, that's the choice for most players, is to use Firebrand wielding ships, especially Fortune Hunters, for the cargo boost, so you can be out there longer. So what I'm really curious about getting at here is about skull runs, which not many players do, and it's pretty easy to kill regular ships, which is usually how skull runs go. And so how do we define what the best ship is in this case? Well, what I wanted to figure out was how to define the ship that is the most consistent at killing any given ship it has to confront in this case. And so in order to do that, you have to know how much damage is going to come out of your ship and how consistent that damage will be. What is the probability of that case? And then you also have to know whether or not the ship itself will be sunk or not, given what's coming out of your ship and how much damage it's going to do. And we'll start off talking about damage. It's probably the most simple part of this, actually. How damage works for ships is that you put points into your cannon skill tree for the different ammo types, as well as for barrage, and later we'll also talk about shrapnel. And then you also put points into your broadside on the sailing skill tree. And those factors multiply together onto the base damage of your cannon shot. And that gives you the damage of any particular round or any particular set of distribution of skill points that you've located. And that's all well and good. And then you can combine this fact with any number of rounds that are coming out of your ship. And you can combine that with ships that have two kinds of rounds. And you sum all of those together and you'd get how much damage your full broadside should do given X number of cannon shots that are coming out or hitting the ship in question. So that's all pretty cut and dry, not too complicated, luckily. Now, where we start getting towards the deep end here is talking about the consistency of damage that's coming out and how do we define the probability of any given state of cannonballs coming out of your ship. So we can know how many cannon shots are coming out of your ship or how many are hitting a ship, and we can know the probability of a special cannon shot coming out of your ship versus it just being a regular shot. And since those are binary cases, it either is a special shot or changed into a special shot, or it remained a normal shot. That is a binary situation, and so that ends up following a binomial probability distribution. And so we end up using that to define the probability of, say, 3 out of 12 cannon shots are special shots coming out of your ship, or 4, or 12 out of 12. And we can do that for every kind of ship. So now we have to talk about health. And unfortunately, the game doesn't want to tell you what the health is of these ships. Unlike regular enemies where you can just hit them with a voodoo doll and know, you can't really know easily with ships. Luckily though, we do have the wiki. So if we head on over there, and there is a ships page that has all the ships. So we just go from there. We'll pick a big one, maybe BITC. Uh, pick a big one, I don't know. Uh, Behemoth, maybe, I guess? Right. Health, health, health. Uh, really? No, there isn't. Okay, is it any other? Okay, Ogre has it. Why doesn't Behemoth? 
Are there any others? No, this one doesn't have it either. Oh my god. Guess I gotta do it. Okay, so the way that I calculated the health of the ships is if you tag their health bar or their sails, you'll see their full health bar, and you can measure left to right the amount of pixels distance uh, for all the green pixels. And then when you damage it, obviously those green pixels go from right to left, so you can measure how many green pixels disappeared from that amount of damage, and then use that to find the health per pixel that it has for that ship, and map that out to its whole health bar based on the amount of pixels in the health bar. And then you can do that for any kind of ship. And it works a little bit better if you damage it more because then your damage per pixel is a bit more accurate. So that was calculating the health of a ship, specifically for the Warlord here at 9,500 is what we found. And highlighted in bold here are a bunch of other ships that I've done the health testing for. The top three here are regular ships and the highest one being Black Harbinger at 11,500 health about. And on the lower end of regular ships, uh, but as far as war type ships that you kill, I tended to see about 6,000, so our range is 6,000 to about 11,500. And not relevant to skull runs, but this is the health uh, that I could find for hunters and warships. You can see about 40,000 range for hunters and upwards of that varies by the warship, ship the line, tally ho being incredibly high. And I also found that warships have this damage reduction of about 8%, uh, so 0.92 of what your regular damage is, so I was finding I would do 884 as opposed to 961, for example. But again, that's just for warship-type ships, uh, so not relevant for the Skull Run ships. So just to prove that I did the health math right and all of that setup, we've got a behemoth here. We saw before that it had about 8600 health, and with the way I've set up, my explosive, it will be doing 6,075 damage. So that should be about three quarters of its health bar gone, quarter left. So we'll do it just to prove that's correct. They know this be a Fuck! Right, okay. So what happened? It turns out that the game can lie to you with the numbers that it's providing. So allegedly we did 6,000 damage, but clearly we did more somehow. So what happens is the whole health of that ship has a side hole health of less than the damage that we did. And it turns out to be close to about 4,000. So 4,000 out of that 6,000 gets done as regular damage to break the hole. But then there's an excess of 2,000-ish damage that is going into the broken hole. And damage going to the broken hole gets doubled. So we double the 2,000 to get 4,000, and then we have the previous 4,000, this new 4,000, that gets added into 8,000, thereabouts. And as we saw before, Behemoth has a total health of over 8,000, but just a little bit, about 8,500. So if we are doing about 8,000 in this new calculation out of the 8,500, then we get a health bar that looks a lot closer to what we were seeing there. And that's, I think, what explains what's happening there. Right, so while we're on the topic of holes, I should probably explain it a little bit further. So I didn't want to get the whole health of every ship, nor the entire full health of every ship, because I'm too lazy. So since this is kind of trying to avoid edge cases that are problematic, I looked at the highest end of ship healths and investigated their holes and it seems like for those they have a whole health of around 40 percent of the total health bar of that ship and that's if you are shooting it without using the shrapnel perk at all and now we have to talk about shrapnel so that perk on the cannon skill tree says that it improves the damage that you are doing onto the whole health of a ship. It does not affect how much damage you do to the main health bar of the ship. 
but it affects how fast it's going to break a hull. And if you break a hull faster, you get to the double damage faster, so you'll kill the ship faster. Now, how much faster? Well, I did not want to get the whole health of every single ship, so I just looked at the highest health ships that I could find and studied their hulls, and it seemed like they had about 40% health of the overall ship as a side main hull health. So if we go with that, and we take 30%, except in practice it was really more like 25% off of the total damage that we have to do to a hull now, then that gets us down to 30%. So if you do 30% of a ship's health, as we calculated it before, then at that point it will start receiving double damage. So the latter 70%, really you only need to do half of that effective damage, so 35%. Plus the 30, so we're at 65%. So going forward, I adjusted the ship's health bar to an effective health bar that you need to kill of only 65%. And then we calculate the damage as normal, and if it exceeds that, then it dies. Oh my god. Okay, are you still here? You're here? Good job. So, we've got how much damage your ship's gonna do, the probability of that kind of damage, and we can flag whether or not it would kill a ship at that health bar or not. What I did to establish how many ships would sink based on this damage is I assumed that we have an even and flat spread of damage between the minimum and the maximum of warship type ships that you'll probably be killing. So that ranged from a war sloop kind of ship at about 6,000 to I stopped at Black Harbinger ships at 11,500. There is Death Omen that I showed earlier that's higher, but they're very few and far between. So we're going to stop at Black Harbinger. And we're going to assume that the ships that spawn and that you kill are fully balanced. So you'll kill lower end as often as higher end ships in that health range. So for example, if you do 10,000 damage then we'll say that you have killed all of the ships, 6,000 to 10,000, that makes sense. And the proportion of ships that you kill, therefore, is that proportion from 6,000 to 10,000 of the 6 to 11,500. All right, we made it. So after a shit ton of coding with ChatGPT with all of this information, dumping thousands and hundreds of thousands and even millions of rows and grouping them and doing a bunch of bullshit we reached this table so what we're looking at here is the left side this is the full spread of points here this is just the multiplicative factor so it starts at 1.05 because you have to have one point in broadside and then you can put four more points giving 0.05 each and Barrage starts at 1 and gets 0.05 each per point. So this represents 5 points. This represents also 5 points being into it. And these are the points going into each of these as well. Now, then on the right side, we have ship variant. So this is, they have some shorthands here like Copper, Storm, Skull, uh, meaning Skull Bones and Copperhead and Storm Chaser. These are the kinds of ships that you can use. Then this is the sailing item that gets applied. I also have none sailing item in case you don't want one that increases the amount of damage and just provides sailing boosts. Then we have cannons. This is originally supposed to be how many cannons your ship's shooting, but it's turned more into how many shots are actually hitting your ship that you're shooting at. Then we have the probability. We have just a damage if you want to care about that. And then we have how many points you didn't end up spending just to try to distinguish two very similar ones. If one uses less points and you can allocate it somewhere else, we'll say that's better. Now, right. So what we care about is this kind of sorting. So this is sorted by the probability. So we want the highest probability at the top. And you can see, to my dismay, there is a lot of options that get you through with a 100% guarantee. There's thousands and thousands of different combinations of ships and point distributions and cannons and 
So that was disheartening when I saw this. But also when I was testing some of these out, I noticed when you shoot, for example, 14 shots out of a war frigate, not all 14 cannon shots will actually register despite them hitting. Even if you hit all 14 shots, I've had as little as nine shots sometimes registering, which ends up causing the ship, if it is using cannonballs that didn't do enough damage, like a normal ship here or a fortune hunter, that ends up turning into a not 100% guarantee because despite shooting 14 cannons, 14 aren't hitting. So we want to be looking at these kind of edge cases. So I'm going to look at eights. That was the lowest that I calculated. That would be a really, really bad situation. So here we go. So here's eights. We got sorted by probability. And we get a lot of storm, a lot of storm chaser. One skull and bones at the top sneaks in. We scroll down a little bit. Another skull and bones. But like, look at, look at all these storm chasers. So there's like, there's no dispute. If you want consistency against situations where not all of your shots are hitting or registering, you pick Storm Chaser. And you pick Storm Chaser using these kind of sailing items, ones that improve your round shot. Steel improves it by three and then adds a crit. Bottle Rocket does not add a crit, but it also gives you three. And that's why these get used to improve the bad edge cases where your probability sucked and you did not get a lot of these special cannonballs that do more damage than the round shots. And this makes up for it and improves your one-shot capabilities over time. Now, just for fun, I want to show what some of these other ones look like. So if we look at just Copperhead, for example, we're seeing 92% is the best that we can do. And it has a really huge median damage because of the explosive shots, but the times where it doesn't hit an explosive shot are not going to kill in these cases and so it ends up having a decent probability of that happen and therefore has a eight percent probability of not one shotting here and if we look at firestorm and fortune hunter they have pretty decent i guess for what they are but there that's a pretty low probability for them 81 percent for firestorm and fortune hunter gets as good as woo 70 percent so we don't like these in this case. Now, something else that's interesting to look at is your sailing item. So if we decide not to use one that improves our damage, and instead, for example, a spyglass or some other kind of sailing item, what does that look like? So again, it's Storm Chaser, but now we get down to 97% which is still pretty high for not having any kind of damage boost. You have just fives across the board. But this allows you to use, for example, Jack Sparrow's Spyglass, which gives a plus three Taskmaster boost, so you can broadside faster and hopefully chew through ships faster and making your skull runs faster, shorter, therefore. To me, this might be a good trade-off. And again, this is a really bad edge case of eight cannonballs being hit. If we go to nine, let's say, scroll back to the top, we got a storm, but now if we hit nine, we have a 99% chance of killing. So in summation, you're going to want to pick Storm Chaser. And if you want the highest probability, then you're going to max out all your damage perks and you're going to pick a round shot damage increasing item. If you're okay with a little bit of risk, you can pick a different sailing item, or you can allocate some of your broadside points elsewhere in the sailing tree and still have a pretty good probability. So with that, I hope you found something informative. I know I did going through this process, and enjoy your skull runs.